for some reason this problem is very very popular i guess that is because it gauges your mental flexibility and how can you come up with new solutions using only the existing resources this is very crucial because indeed you have to implement a queue data structure using only the stack data structure so let's see what we can do about it hello friends welcome back to my channel first i will explain you the problem statement and see what it means we will understand what all functions do you have to implement and then we are going to see how do you perform all of these operations we will do a side by side comparison of a queue and how are we achieving all of the same operations using a stack after that as usual we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action without further ado let's get started first of all let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly in this problem you have to implement all of the operations that you usually perform on a queue data structure and the only catch is that you have to perform these operations just by using a stack data structure just to give you a quick review a standard queue looks something like this right and it follows the principle of first in first out it simply means that any element that enters the queue first it will be the first one to get out so for example if the element 4 enters the queue first then 8 and then a 15 now if you try to pop out an element 4 will be the first element to be popped out right because it entered the queue first whereas in a stack data structure if you enter 4 and then a 8 and then a 15 now if you have to pop out elements 15 will go out first because a stack works on the principle of last in first out that is where the challenge is so using a last in first out structure you have to somehow implement a first in first out structure and you have to implement all of these operations so push simply means that you are able to add new elements to your queue pop simply means that you are popping out a element from the queue and this will follow the first in first out policy peak is very similar to pop it simply means that you are looking at the top element you just do not remove it from the queue and the last operation is empty just tells you hey is there any element left in the queue or not if empty will return true if your queue is completely empty otherwise it will return a false so these are all the operations that we want from our implementation let's see what we can do about it when you try to think about a solution to this problem this solution cannot come that okay i am trying to think of a brute force way or what is the optimal way there is just a certain way by which you can implement it correct so let us say i have some operations let us assume that i am making four operations in my queue so what we are going to do is on the left hand side over here i have a standard queue so we can see how the actual operations will happen in a standard queue data structure and on the right what i have over here is i have two stack data structures one is called an input and one is called an output so we will be trying to mimic the operations of a queue using our stack data structures and there is a certain way by which you can go about doing it so for example the first operation is a push operation so what you need to remember is as soon as you see a push operation just take this element and push it in your input stack this is a rule and you have to always follow it whenever you see a push operation just take the number and add it to your input stack so let us try to follow and see what happens so currently i have four operations right i am pushing an element 4 then a 8 then a 15 and then a 16 correct if you had a queue that has elements in a first in first out order then how do these elements get added to your queue after these four operations your queue will end up looking something like this correct four elements have been added so now you know that if you try to pop from the queue you will get out a four right this is how your queue works and if you remember what did i say about the stack if you have any push operation just put all your elements in the input stack so over here in my input stack i will add all of these four elements 4 8 15 and then a 
right? So this is now done. Don't worry about it. We will go ahead and implement the pop operation as well. Because currently, if you do a pop operation, 16 will come out, right? But that is not desired. According to a queue, 4 should come out, right? So now that is exactly what we're going to do. We now have two pop operations. Let us say I am calling a pop on the queue. In my queue, as soon as I call a pop, 4 will get out, right? But over here in my stacks, if I call a pop, 16 gets out. This is not what we desire, correct? So there is a certain process and you have to look at your output stack. This will determine what elements should get out when I'm using the pop operation. Right now, my output stack is completely empty. So if your stack is empty and you get a pop operation, then you need to empty your entire input stack and put it in your output stack. So you will keep on popping one element at a time from your input stack and then put it in your output stack. Let us visualize it. So you pop an element and it goes in your output stack over here. Once again, you pop an element and it goes over here. You pop the next element and it goes over here and you pop the next element and it goes over here. So you have done this until your input stack is completely empty. Now you are ready to pop out an actual element. If you notice in my output stack, I have reversed the ordering, correct? And now whenever someone says pop from your queue, you left out this element, correct? From your stacks, you will look at your output stack and then you will pop out an element. So when I pop out, what do I get? I get a four. So you see, we were able to mimic the same operation, correct? Look at the next step now. Once again, I am calling the pop function. In your queue, what will happen? Eight will get out, right? This is the expected operation. And in your stacks, what do you do? You look at your output stack. This time it is not empty. So what you need to do is just look at your stack and pop out an element. When I pop out, I once again get eight. So once again, we were able to mimic the operation, correct? You might be wondering why did we have to pop out all the elements and what happens to the input stack now? So to clarify this, let us look at the next operation. The next operation I have is push 23. So in my standard queue, what will happen? I will get a 23 added over here, right? And as per the rules, whenever you get a push operation, just add your element to the input stack. Don't think anything and just add an element. So 23 gets added over here. So now things are getting a little interesting. Both of your stacks now have some elements. What happens now? So let us try to do one more pop operation. As soon as you do a pop operation, what will happen in the standard queue? In the standard queue, this 15 will get popped out, right? And now what do you do about your stacks? If you notice, my output stack is not empty. So once again, just look at your output stack and pop an element. So you see, we have the same result now, correct? So we are able to mimic the entire functionality of a queue. Let us go ahead and do two more pop operations on the queue. So I do a pop, I get out 16 and then I do pop again and I get our 23. What about the stacks? For the first pop operation, you will look at your output stack. It has an element. So I will take it and I will pop it out. Next, you have the pop operation again. And this time your output stack is once again completely empty. And if you remember, what did we do when your output stack was empty? Take all the elements from your input stack and push them on your output stack one by one. So I will take up this 23 and it will go in my output stack over here. Now we have an element and we can safely pop it out. So you see, we were able to mimic all the operations of a queue data structure using our two stacks. If you notice, I just looked at the push and pop operation. The peak operation is very, very similar to the pop operation because in peak, you just look at the element, but not pop it out. So when you're implementing the peak function, just look in your output stack at the top. Whichever element is at the top, just don't pop it out. And that is the solution, right? The last thing is, is empty. 
So you know that your queue is completely empty. And if you have to determine if the queue is completely empty, just look at both your input stack and your output stack. If both of them are empty, you can say that yes, your queue is empty right now. So this is how you can go about implementing a queue using two stacks, right? Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this functionality. And on the right, I once again have a queue over here that is just for reference. We won't be using it at all. So what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create two stacks, the input stack and the output stack. And these will come in handy whenever we do the push and pop operation, right? So now you have to write down that, okay, what does happen when you do a push operation? So let us say I'm calling push four, push eight, and then a push 15. So if you remember in a queue, what will happen? Four gets pushed, eight gets pushed, and then 15 gets pushed, right? But for a stack, what do you do? You simply take the input stack and push that element. So if I'm pushing these three elements, they get pushed like this, four, eight, and a 15, correct? So far, so good. Now is the time that you actually try to pop and peak elements. If you remember, peak is very identical to pop. You just look at the element. You don't pop it out, right? So let us say I want to peak at an element. So what do you do? You will look at your output stack, right? It is completely empty. So you have to tell me something, right? And that is similar to the pop operation. So we will assume that we have to pop an element. So my output stack is empty. So what do I do? I look up my input stack and then take out elements one by one. That is exactly what I do over here in my while loop. I will keep on popping until my input stack is completely empty. So I will take these elements and push them in my output stack. So input stack is now completely empty. And if I have to peak, I will just look at this element. Do not pop it. So I will return output dot peak. So I'm just looking at this element. With the queue, you will just looking at this element. If this is now clear to you, the pop operation is very, very simple. When you're doing a pop, just do a peak. So peak will tell you that, okay, this is my top element. And then you pop it out. You do an output dot pop. So this element gets popped out, right? It is very, very simple. And the rest is very easy. Once again, if you have to push another element, let us say I'm pushing 100. In your queue, it gets pushed over here. And in your stacks, it will get pushed over here. So this is how things will go on. And you have successfully implemented a queue data structure. If you want to know that, hey, is my queue completely empty? So you just check. If your input and output queue both are empty, then you return a true, else you will return a false. Talking about the time complexity now. The time complexity of push operation is order of one, right? Because you just push a new element. But the worst time is taken when you are trying to pop an element. So this operation happens in an order of n time. Because it can be possible that you keep on pushing elements in your stack, right? And then you call a pop operation. So you will have to take down every element from this stack to the other one. And that is going to end up taking a lot of time. So the time complexity of this solution will be determined by the most expensive operation and it is order of n. And same is the space complexity, once again order of n, because you need that extra space of your stacks to make sure that you are able to implement this operation. I hope now you perfectly understand how can you implement the queue data structure using only a stack data structure. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that this problem is not very difficult and you may find it in some of the beginning level coding interviews. So whenever you see such a question, always make sure that you are asking your interviewer all the relevant questions. For example, you can ask them, hey, is the size of a queue limited? And then you can also ask, hey, what happens if my queue is a size 10 and then more elements start to come in? Do you want to exclude all the new elements or do you want to remove all the old elements? So based upon that, make all the changes and then come up with a solution. Your interviewer will be very happy with it. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems? Or do you have any other method in mind by which you can implement this queue data structure? Also, can you do the opposite? Can you implement a stack data structure using only queues? It will be very, very interesting. So tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. 
As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to keep bringing more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as members, you do get prior to reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next video where I explain how can you implement the stack data structure using only a queue. Until then, see ya.